Hey y'all, this is Marissa with Marissa Moments and you know what day it is. It is Oracle Tuesday, one of my favorite days of the week. So I'm going to be reading from my personally made Marissa Moments Oracle deck. Yes, I do pray to God. Um, basically this reading is to provide guidance, wisdom, clarity for your journey, for your healing, for the next steps that you wanna take, whether it be today, tomorrow, next week, this year. Take it how it resonates, leave everything else to the wayside, and let's go. All right, so it actually just started recording by itself, but we're just gonna go with it. So, um, first three cards just popped out all together. So, wash your vehicle, ooh, shade, straight out the gate, right? Um, <laughs> I keep looking at this hole in my shirt, but whatevs. Um, wash your vehicle. What I'm receiving behind this is, like, the spirit is just like, no, like, there's no message, like, literally just wash your vehicle. And, and what I'm hearing beyond that is like, whether you have a car or whether you walk everywhere, just make sure you clean, scrubbed up, all those types of things, right? Well, um, what I'm hearing is it's, you need to get organized, get sh structure, right? Get focused. That's what spirit is saying when they tell you to wash your vehicle because um, in the bigger, grander scheme of things, you are that vehicle, right? that meat suit, these, these bodies that we have while we're here on this earthly realm are our vehicles, our original OG vehicles in order to get from A to B. And so if we're not taking care of ourselves, and again, take it how it resonates because it might be talking about your car. I don't wanna talk about my truck, but whatever. Um, <laughs> you need to make sure that you're taking care of it. Take care of things and they will take care of you, yourself included. If you're supposed to know, you will. What I'm receiving, this um, message is about you, just almost like returning back to self, um, just getting really focused in on what it is you're supposed to be doing. Because what I'm seeing is someone who's having the habit of, like you get really focused and then all of a sudden something gets your attention, right? And I get it because ADD, right? Attention deficit, but even in those moments, you become mindful and you say, okay, I'm straying away from my point, purpose, mission again. So that's when you pull yourself back in. So don't allow your nosiness, your inquisitive, inquisitivity, it felt right, whatever, we're going to go with it. Um, your inquisitiveness, yeah, there we go. Your curiosity, bam, um, to <laughs> lead you astray because what God is trying to do right now is to kind of bring things in for your focus. It, I, what I see is almost like a ball, right? That's so expansive that you can't even see it, right? Right now you can't see my hands, but I'm creating a circle around myself. But when you start bringing things in, slowly but surely, you're able to see the clearer picture. You're able to focus in on what it is you're supposed to be doing as opposed to all of these outside distractions. So, Stop being nosy. If you're supposed to know something, trust and believe God is going to provide that insight, that intel, that that tea, right? Fitting in is so overrated. Ooh. Okay, spirit is really just telling you like, listen, your crowd right now may not be it. May not be the end all be all that you kind of put them down to be. Um I remember <laughs> years ago, I hung out with people and we had this uh, notion of no new friends, right? No new friends. However, in hindsight, I realized how toxic that notion is, right? Because if we're not allowing ourselves to have new friends, to meet new people, new acquaintances, all of these types of new relationships, then we're stifling ourselves. Unless we're all growing collectively, which rarely happens in those situations and circumstances, then we need to make sure that we aren't preventing ourselves from growth before, like cutting ourselves off at the knees, right? Fitting in is so overrated. Just because everyone else is saying, now nah, we got our key core group doesn't mean that you have to be one of them. And if you wanna know if, if it's for you, does it spark joy? 
Does it spark joy? Does it make you feel fulfilled? Does it make you feel happy? Does it make you feel like you're doing something good, right? Does it give you that <gasps> type moment, right? Are you excited behind it? Or do you feel drained every time you do it? Whatever it is, take it how it resonates. That could mean hanging out with these this friend group, right? Maybe it used to be energetic. Maybe it used to be pleasing to have that gossip, right? To talk about people, to air out our, our bad days and talk about what's aching and cranking. And I just said that because it rhymed, but all the things that are bothering us and we felt like, yeah, right. We fulfilled each other and we empowered one another through that darkness and negativity and sorrow. But now that you've been healing, you recognize that this is just kind of keeping you in some sort of a hell loop that you no longer wish to be a part of. So what do we do? How do we figure out how to get out of there? Look for the things, people, places, and things that actually spark joy in a healthy way, right? You know what is healthy. You know what is unhealthy. It's up to you to decide which direction you're going to take. And your programming is telling you to anticipate failure. <clears throat> it is lying, right? Oftentimes what I hear is the reason why we stick with the, the same crowd, right? The same people, the same crew, the same situations, places, circumstances, all those things is because we fear failure, right? This is something that we're comfortable with, something that we're used to, right? It's an old shoe, just kind of like this shirt. Okay, I see all the shade spirit. Dang. Okay, I'll either sew it up or get rid of it. <clears throat> but just because something is comfortable doesn't mean you should keep it. Just because something is comfortable doesn't mean you should keep it. And the notion of stepping outside of that comfort zone does not automatically ensure that you're going to fail. On the actual flip side of it, it it's almost like a, a promise to success. I am like slurring everything. I promise I'm not drinking. <laughs> it is like in the morning and I don't drink anyway. But anyway, that's not <laughs> what you're here for. But the thing of it is the bottom line to this message right here on this card is anticipate success. Turn that mindset around. The, the reason why you constantly anticipate failure is because within that group of people or within that the group that has had a huge hand in raising you to where you are right now and today, they told you that it wasn't going to be successful. They told you everything that would go wrong with whatever idea that you would come up with, whether it be putting together an outfit, right? You know, those colors don't go together. You know, those patterns don't match, right? You know, that doesn't look good, right? Now, maybe I'm talking about personal experience. Maybe I'm talking about you. That's up to you to decide. But the thing of it is when you come up with a concept or when a concept more so is put on your heart, it is for you. Now, how you get there, what vehicle you use to get there is completely up to you. You have to use your discernment, but you're not going to be able to begin that journey towards that manifestation, dream, vision, goal. If you continue to surround yourself with those who tell you all the reasons why you cannot. Whoo. And if you don't believe that, let's check this bottom of the deck right quick. The past gave you lessons. The present gives you opportunity, right? Learn from the past. Learn from those naysayers. Learn from channel that energy into something positive. Stop allowing that that negativity, that that darkness to become like a growth on you that continues to expand where you become comfortable. What I see is like Eeyore, right? Getting that that hunchback of uh, Notre Dame type thing, right? Where this growth is just continuing to grow. And at first you're sitting up straight, you're standing straight. But then after a while, you're starting to hunch and you're starting to hunch and you're starting to drag down before you know it your knuckles are on the ground because you can't stand up straight anymore because you're letting the weight of the world and the weight of your past to continue to drag you down but what spirit is saying is it's time for renewal you have put in way too much work at this point in your life to allow that darkness to try to come back and tether you in Oof. The past gave you lessons. The present gives opportunity. 
but only to those who choose to accept it and receive it. And that's it, guys. <laughs> so that's the message for this week. Thank you so much for watching, listening. I really hope that you received your intended message in the way that God, Gaia, ancestors, angels, and saints intended for you to receive it. Now remember, use your healed discernment. Don't use that toxic darkness notion and stuff like that to say, ah, she just talking or whatever. I mean, you may feel that way anyway, and that's fine. It doesn't affect me. I'm rubber, your glue. You know what I'm saying? But Take the message, how it resonates, apply it to your life, allow it to grant clarity to your journey and your healing and your ascension and let's go. So that's it for now. I will see you next week. In the meantime, apples and tomatoes and all the things and uh, happy healing. Bye. Mm -hmm.